Welcome to season 12 of the Parenting Aces podcast, a proud member of the Tennis Channel Podcast Network. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and this week I'm going back home to Shreveport, Louisiana to talk with the Athletic Director of Centenary College and the Head of Tennis at Corby's Tennis Center in my hometown. These two gentlemen are tremendous. They are working very hard to bring college tennis back to Centenary College that has a very storied history in college tennis. And I am so excited for them to share their journey of reinstating a college tennis program while at the same time transitioning from Division I to Division Three to make that happen. So um, kind of to give you a little bit of background, the way this whole episode came about was I was on a plane eavesdropping on people that were sitting in front of me and kept talking about tennis. And every time somebody talks about tennis, my antenna go up and I interrupted, apologized for eavesdropping on them, but started asking questions about what they were talking about. And it turned out I was on the flight with the Dean of Students of Centenary College, who was discussing bringing college tennis back to Centenary. And so I introduced myself and told them about Parenting Aces in our podcast and invited them to come on to share with all of you the challenges involved in doing exactly what they're trying to do. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Chris Dudley and David Orr. Chris and David, it is so wonderful to meet you both and to get you on the podcast. And I am super, super excited to share your work with our audience. And before we get going, I want to just kind of give you all an opportunity to tell the Parenting Aces audience who you are, and what your role is. And Chris, we're going to start with you. Sure. Good morning. Um, I'm the director of tennis at Corby's Tennis Center in Shreveport, Louisiana. My wife, Amy, and I have been there for three and a half years. We arrived at Shreveport in February of 2020 to to be the new stewards of this iconic tennis center that, of course, you're familiar with. Um, Corby's is sort of in the heart of the Shreveport area. It is um, 11 courts, six soft courts or you know clay courts and five hard courts with a couple of junior courts that have been created for pickleball and i guess kind of the neat thing i know <laughs> don't say the p word um the neat thing about corby's and our um tenure there is for a relatively sort of medium-sized facility we had just under sixty thousand people come through our doors last year and um Considering how hot it is during the summer and we're closed for three hours every afternoon, we've got some amazing numbers. The other really neat thing that happened to us in 2022 was the USTA uh, chose us as one of only 10 uh, public facilities to receive the Outstanding Facility Award at the national level. So we were we were uh, brought to Cincinnati during the Western and Southern uh, a year ago and receive that that accolade. And then later a different group from the USTA uh, chose us to be one of the first original eight designees for the premier facility designation. And that has been a really neat collaboration as well. So um, little old Shreveport has gotten some really neat um, attention and we put in, uh, Amy runs the business side and I run the on-court side and, uh, and we go home happily every night because we don't have to be in each other's uh, way, but it's a two-person job at Corby's for for how much we have going on there. And I want to just add that uh, Corby's, I grew up playing at Corby's, but it had kind of gone downhill um, in terms of maintenance and the, the building itself was not in a great place. The courts were not being maintained properly before you guys got there. And in very recent years, um, the place has overgone or undergone a complete overhaul and mm-hmm. is really spectacular. Y'all have done an amazing job. 
Well, we we stepped in as the stewards. I'd love to take more credit. We I think we've done a good job of the maintaining. But uh, the club was closed the entirety of 2019. One point three million dollar renovation, all new courts, all new lighting. And the building is actually beautiful, uh, mid-century modern building. And um, I didn't know that until my wife told me. But um, <laughs> it's it is uh, we've been honored to be the stewards of it. And it's a, a beautiful campus uh, right next to the golf course and Corby's Golf Center will celebrate its 100th anniversary in 2024 and the tennis facility was built in 65 so it's a long time sort of like i said iconic um campus that we are blessed to be part of and just funny aside um i well my father before me i and my two brothers all grew up playing there and uh, played the city tournament there. And for those in my audience who may have heard my podcast with my brother, Jeffrey Goodman, a few years ago, uh, all about bringing the city tournament back to Shreveport, Corby's is where it's held. So kind of all coming full circle. Well, it's, yeah, it's it's held at Bozier Center now because of the size of, of that facility. But uh, I know that Jeffrey was instrumental along with Todd Killen, the director over there at, at Bozier. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, David, your turn. Give us a little down and dirty about who you are and, <laughs> and why you're here today. Well, Lisa, you know, I'm not going to give you the dirty, but I'll give you the down. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I came to Centenary as a student athlete in 1992, uh, graduated in 1996, played the sport of soccer. Uh, growing up, I played everything. I played tennis, football, basketball, golf, baseball, you name it. Uh, soccer is what gave me my pathway to to, to play in college. So uh, I stuck with that. Uh, became a high school coach while I was uh, a soccer coach for at the varsity level when I was only a sophomore in college. Uh, at my alma mater, by the at way. At my alma mater, Captain Shreve High School. And I was there for three years. Um, and then I jumped on, graduated, and I went ahead and volunteered as a, a volunteer assistant coach back here at Centenary following that. Then kind of came to a crossroads in my early 20s of what do I want to really do with this? Uh, do I want to go into coaching or do I want to go into another career field? And um, my father said, there's two types of workers out there, those that live to work and those that work to live. And, you know, I thought about that and I'm more of the live to work person, because if you're passionate about something, you don't feel like you're actually working. It's not an occupation. You just go do it. You do it anyways. And uh, so I got in the coaching business. Um, I went back to Texas where I'm originally from. And then um, I was there for only a few months and I got a call from Centenary asking if I would come and, and help coach the men's soccer program as an assistant. Uh, soccer coach. So I came back uh, six months later, I was the associate head coach. Uh, and then uh, just my career kind of took off from there. And uh, we had immediate success. Uh, things were going very well. I got recruited out like most people would think, you know, if you do really well, somebody's going to come calling or you're going to get a promotion. Somebody came calling. The dollars that they were throwing my way were very high. And my wife looked at me at the time and said, why are you not answering these people? Hmm. So we went back to Dallas and we were there for five years, but my heart was still at Centenary College in Shreveport, Louisiana. And it's because of the type of place Shreveport is, but it's also because of the amazing college that we have here in the heart of Shreveport. Came back, coached at Centenary um, up until 2016. Then I went into the administration realm. Never had a goal to become an athletic director, uh, but I've now been the full time athletic director for the past three years and um, love every minute of it because this is a great place to be. I so, love it. Yeah. I love it. That's wonderful. And just for perspective, for those of you who aren't familiar with Shreveport or with Centenary or Corby's, they are in very close proximity to one another, which is why I have both of these gentlemen on this week. And in addition to that, Centenary, after how many years of not having college tennis? We haven't had college tennis since 2020. Okay. So three years college tennis has been gone. In 2024, I am so excited to announce that you guys are bringing back college tennis in partnership with Corby's where the matches will actually be played, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. 
So Chris, I'm going to jump back to you. Why did Corby's want to get involved in college tennis with Centenary College? Well, like you had mentioned, Lisa, the the proximity is such a no brainer. From the from the balcony at our tennis center, we see the big golden dome uh, athletic complex at, at Centenary. And um, David and I had never met, but um, the the president of Centenary, uh, Chris Holloman, his wife is named Connie, and Connie is a regular at Corby's Tennis Center. And so I think that Connie had mentioned to David that you really need to get to know the Dudleys a bit. And so we started this conversation last year, I mean, well, uh, well over a year ago. And uh, David and I hit it off pretty easily. And before you knew it, we were walking the grounds and talking about potential expansion. We're, we're a little landlocked where we are um, and the way the tennis center is set up. And ideally, we can add another couple of courts. We need to add at least one currently in order to host. But um, we have a couple of sister complexes here, which are um, part of the Shreveport Parks and Rec um, domain. And they can certainly help. They have enough hard courts because you, you need a, a, a minimum of six. Right. And so that's something we're building toward. But it's such a natural alliance. And we're sort of thrilled. I mean, when when Amy and I took this position, Amy always referred to to us as the stewards of this. We're not, you know, we didn't come in guns blazing. This is our business now. We're very much community oriented. Um, I, we looked at it as an absolute win win. Bring more attention to the city. Bring more attention to the college. Bring more attention to Corby's. Like the perfect win 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 trifecta. Love that. David, why was the program cut in the first place? What happened to lead up to that happening? You know, there's a there's a more than one reason for that. Sure. Part of that was um, you mentioned we mentioned earlier Todd Killen, who is a Centenary alum and is the pro out in Bossier City, which is the city right next to Shreveport. And um, Todd was our tennis coach, Centenary alum after the legendary Jimmy Harrison retired. And um, who is, by the way, Ryan and Christian Harrison's grandfather. That's correct. And um, Centenary did a little transformation about 14 years ago when they announced that they were moving from NCAA Division One to NCAA Division Three. And when that when that happened, um, that changed the athletic dynamics of the institution. Um, and most most. When Todd was here, he was amazing. Todd Killen was an amazing tennis coach, amazing recruiter, amazing ambassador for the city as well as the college. Um, and uh, But he had an opportunity uh, to be a tennis pro, and I, I, that was awesome uh, for him and, and so proud of him for everything he's done. Um, but we just had a really hard time finding the right fit of a tennis coach mm -hmm. since Todd Killen had retired and, uh, and moved on. And through that process and also re-identifying ourselves as a, as a Division three program, um, we were really struggling to field uh, teams that were tennis players instead of dual, just dual sport athletes. Mm. So we were fielding teams, but 80, 90 percent were dual sport athletes that actually didn't come to Centenary to play tennis. They came here to play another sport, but were recruited because we had a need for tennis players. And... Uh, Although we embrace and love dual sport athletes, we do want some athletes in the tennis program that are here just to play tennis because truth is we have a very strong competitive spirit. Yeah. And, you know, to put that time and concentration in to, to prioritize a program like tennis, uh, we needed some more uh, priority tennis players. Uh, so in tw when, when COVID came through, um, and we were struggling to, uh, we knew we were going to struggle to fill a roster coming out of COVID. We paused the tennis program, mainly because we wanted to find the right fit, the right coach, the right circumstance. And, you know, tennis is in a, our, we, we're in the Southern Collegiate Athletic Conference, um, which is a Southern-based conference, mainly schools out of Texas. We do have one anomaly school, which is in Colorado Springs. That's Colorado College. They must love having to travel to you. <laughs> well, it's beautiful, but you got to get there, right? Yeah, so it's beautiful yeah. once you're there. Yeah. Um, and uh, so with all that being said, you know, tennis is important to the community. It's important to the college. 
uh, our faculty and staff always are playing tennis. We have a lot of centenary folks that are playing tennis uh, as an amateur and and just kind of going out and having fun. And the my first day as athletic director, I had two charges in my mind. One, centenary is going to uh, restart college football at Centenary College. Uh, we haven't had it in 82 years. Wow. And that was the first thing that uh, we started a 13 month feasibility study on that uh, to find out if that would work. And then second, I wanted to make sure tennis came back and it came back the right way. Um, and uh, after talking with uh, you know, Querby's was always Querby's Tennis Center, the city of Shreveport was always on our radar once I had talked to our president after becoming the athletic director. But it wasn't until Connie Holloman, our president's, the president's wife, our first lady of the college, mentioned Chris and her relationship with, with Chris and Amy that we believe, I believe strongly in relationship dynamics. You know, partnerships are, are more than just transactions, they're relationships. And so meeting Chris and Amy, it, it just fueled the fire more because of what wonderful people they are, what they can do, what they have done. Um, their community spirit, which is part of what we have at Centenary. We want to be part of the community. We want to be Shreveport's college. Um, it's just another inroads into being part of the community. But I also want to help Querby's Tennis Center. I want Querby's Tennis Center to be greater with our partnership. So um, Chris and Amy are amazing. And by the way, if, if any of your folks ever come to Shreveport, you got to go to Querby's Tennis Center and meet Chris and Amy. But we wanted to be part of that and see if they were welcoming of that. And of course they were, and uh, we, we couldn't be more thrilled. So, but tennis awesome. is part of our future and we know it is, and we love the sport. Uh, like I said, I played it as a youth and uh, this is great. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Chris, aside from, you know, wanting to build that relationship with Centenary and support the, the college that's right across the street from you guys, how do you see Corby's benefiting from hosting a college tennis program on site? So I think there's so many neat dynamics. And was, as David was talking, my, my mind went to some of the things that we've talked about openly in these discussions. Um, we bring so much, it would bring so much neat attention to the city. Um, you know, we're blessed to be at a, a very busy tennis facility. So honestly, it's not about how it benefits Corby's as much as it brings a lot of attention to the to the city. I think the city is in a good place in our three and a half years here. I think just the immediate neighborhood near where we are has improved. It um, it feels safer. It feels more like home. I think um, the city itself, which is six or seven minutes to leave Corby's and be parked downtown, the city itself is undergoing kind of a neat renaissance. Um, as far as the relationship between the two entities, between um, Centenary and Corby's, I think that bringing the attention to the, really the sport has exploded since COVID. So have, so have almost all the outdoor activities. But I think there's so much to be um, nurtured here and I love the attention to all three. Um, but honestly, I feel like Corby's is sort of the third and least important just because we're already at a at a neat place as far as how busy we are. Um, until we expand, we can't grow a whole lot more than where we are other than adding some programming here and there during hours that are untraditional. Mm -hmm. um, we're 100% capacity weeknights. We're 100 capacity percent capacity Saturdays until lunchtime and there's I mean if you haven't booked a court you're you're out yeah so I don't and, know if that answers that well one thing that I, I was kind of trying to get to is the fact that uh there's always been a strong junior tennis program in Shreveport um some top players have come out of Shreveport, um, when I was growing up, Shreveport hosted the National 14s, alternating between boys and girls each year, um, which was a really cool thing to get to grow up around. And I love the fact that a public facility is going to be hosting college matches and exposing 
junior players and their families to what college tennis is and what it can be for these kids. And, and especially those who have been listening to this podcast for a while or following me understand that division three is such an incredible opportunity for most American junior tennis players. That's where they're going to likely end up. Maybe not as freshmen, maybe they're going to try and start out at division one, but for a lot of them, they're going to wind up at a division three school. And I think understanding how great division three tennis is, how competitive it is, um, and, and for Corby's to be a site for that to be showcased is really valuable to the community and to the junior tennis community in, in particular. Now, Lisa, one of the thing, Lisa, one of the things that Chris and I have talked about in benefiting Querbys is one of the things we had to do at Centenary in order to add football is we had to remove our tennis courts uh, because we were, we are just like Querbys are landlocked. Yeah. Uh, So short term was to be able to, uh, you know, bring some attention and a little bit more awareness to the sport through Querbys tennis center and through Centenary college athletics. But additionally, Chris and I have talked about it. Some of it's a lot of like, those big audacious thinking ideas that you come up with, but, uh, you know, a a centenary actually, uh, and we actually have it in our master strategic plan for facilities for centenary long-term. The long-term plan is for centenary to build an adjacent tennis facility to Querbys on land, basically just across the street and uh, be able to partner with Querbys, allow Querbys to use those tennis courts, just like they're allowing us to use their tennis courts uh, and have that great relationship to build a stronger program to allow more people to come out. I mean, as Chris was just saying, they're booked. Well, could we book more? Could we could we have sure. larger tournaments? Could we have larger events? Could we have community events, uh, not just national or regional events, uh, to really spearhead the development of that this sport because it is an amazing sport. And then. It's one of the few sports. I mean, everybody could talk about golf. You can play golf in your 70s and 80s, but you could play tennis into your 70s and 80s. For sure. It's an amazing sport. Yeah. And uh, you know, you look around, how many people didn't pick up tennis until they were in their late 20s or 30s or 40s? Right. Mm-hmm. So um, but to be able to get people interested and passionate about the sport as a as a part of their lifestyle, right? Could we help create that? And then you also mentioned division three. Most people don't know this, but there are 200 Division I athletic departments in the country. There are over 400 Division Three athletic departments in the country. So the vast yeah. majority of student athletes going off to participate in college athletics are going at the Division Three level. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I have said this a million times, but it is not a hierarchy. Division One isn't at the top and Division Three at the bottom with Division Two sandwiched in between. There are Division Three programs that can obliterate Division One programs and vice versa. So there are all levels of competition and play and talent at all the divisions, including NAIA and junior college. And so to widen that funnel when you are in the recruiting process and understand that your right fit could be in any division, including NAIA and junior college, if you allow yourself the gift of looking into all those different divisions and types of schools. David, I, I want to just quickly um, touch on the fact that Centenary decided to make the move from Division One to Division Three. Can you just tell us briefly why that decision was made and what does it do for Centenary overall to change divisions? So Centenary as a division one, we're the smallest in the nation at the time. Now this, so the brief description of this, of why is if you look like a duck, walk like a duck and quack like a duck, you're a duck. Hmm. We were much more aligned as a division three. We looked much more like a division three competitive as we were. You just mentioned it. Division three competition and division one competition. There isn't really a hierarchy outside of the finances of like power five conferences. Right. So, but that's, that's the vast minority of all college athletics. So we wanted to align ourselves regionally as well as nationally um, with like, like schools, 
Hmm. The division three experience is holistic. Division one feels more like a job. And then you go to college while you're yep. in this full-time job. Division three, you're marrying your passion in athletics with your with your opportunities and engagement in academics and future career success. For sure. And and Centenary has always been known for high academic standards. Um, so for those of you not familiar with Centenary, I urge you to look it up. We'll have a link in the show notes to the college's mm-hmm. website so that you can get a little bit more information there. So guys, what are the challenges of bringing back a college tennis program? Um, I want to hear about the financial challenges. I want to hear about the coach search challenge the recruiting challenge and anything else that I don't know um, that you guys are kind of living at the moment as you're trying to bring this program back. Well, I mean, from the co- college aspect of build it, rebuilding a tennis program, the first challenge is you need to hire the right coach. Um, financially, we're committed to the tennis program. So we're not, I don't think that's where our challenge lies, but our challenge certainly is going to lie if bringing in the right tennis coach. Uh, we want to partner that tennis coach with Quervy's Tennis Center. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't want to just align them with the college. We want this to be a full relationship partnership where we're both benefiting from this. And that even means our tennis players, student athletes that, that come into our program will have opportunities to also help with the local community and the youth tennis in the area. And that's what excites us at Centenary because most of our athletic programs do that already yeah. is get aligned with the youth. Uh, in the community. But, um, you know, another challenge is just going to be the growth of the facility. You know, that's, that's probably the biggest challenge. We've, we've got uh, a lot of resources that we're working with. We're waiting on some answers on some resources uh, to help us. We want to help Quarabies build their facility. Um, You know, Chris mentioned earlier, adding a court or more uh, on the existing uh, grounds, Quarabies Tennis Center. Centenary wants to take part in that. Hmm. I mean, it's an investment in them, just like they're investing in us. And that's like I said, that's our relationship dynamic. And, you know, I, we go around a lot of cities where we're traveling all the time. Right. And you, you go to these college, so-called college towns. But a lot of our colleges aren't in college towns. They're in your normal everyday cities. I mean, San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, uh, Baton Rouge, even. And so from there, we just believe that we're a, a major part of the city. We want to be part of the city. Yeah. I you know, this that. community around us is important to us. And we want to be an act, a resource to them. We don't want to be why they're here. We want to help them be great why they're here. Have other reasons to love the city and us to help facilitate that. And this is, so that's part of the challenge is that we get it right. Yeah. We do it well. Yeah, for sure. Chris, yeah, um, how do you see centenary coaches and players integrating with what you guys already have going on at Corby's? Well, this is this is wonderfully selfish on our part. We're we're thrilled with the idea of whoever the coach is, we would like to offer them the opportunity to increase their income by teaching at Corby's alongside of me and you know some other folks that we have. We also have fallen in love with the idea of some of these college athletes being able to um, to help at our facility as far as front desk and helping run programming. And so some of it's actually extremely selfish, but I think that's the nature of the tennis business when you've got a college facility or a college program in your town. Mm -hmm. Um, We had even uh, added this around a little bit. We had talked about the possibility of offering or if Centenary could offer potentially a tennis management or a a racket sports management degree or track at some point. There's only a very few. I know Ferris Ferris State is one of them. Hope College in Michigan is one of them. There's only a few, like fewer than five, that offer a, a racket sports program, like a management program. Yep. Yeah, and that's a great opportunity for these players as well that want to keep their foot in the door of the tennis world after college, 
not necessarily as a professional tennis player, but as a tennis professional in some other capacity. And um, yes. yeah, we've done podcasts on that program as well. And it is a great opportunity for these young student athletes to learn what it takes to be successful in the business side of tennis. Um, you know, and, beyond and as you probably, player. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You're probably aware there's a gigantic vacuum right now. Um, there are very few up and coming coaches that aren't gray haired like myself. And there's um, so there's a giant there's a giant gap needed of ladies and people of color. And there's opportunities um, that I think down the road, especially clubs uh, around the country that have the means can attract new new coaches you know i went through uspta for my coaching there are coaching certifications there's a professional tennis registry registry ptr but america is not the only uh, country that's dealing with this every country that's involved in tennis is in desperate need of qualified coaches and so there's going to be a vacuum uh that's going to hit us more quickly than than i think people understand Coaches and officials um, here in Southern California, we're having to pass on hosting tournaments because we can't get the officials. So um, what a cool opportunity for the college players as well to step in and volunteer or, you know, not greatly paid, but but paid a little bit of money um, to officiate at, at adult tournaments, junior tournaments, whatever the city can bring in. Um, there's so many opportunities to engage these athletes. So I, I want to give each of you um, kind of the opportunity to give your recruiting pitch for players and for coaches who might be considering coming to Shreveport, playing at Centenary or working at Centenary and partnering with Corby's. So um, David, since you're the athletic director, I'm going to let you go first since I'm, I'm going to guess you've had maybe a little more experience at, at the recruiting pitch, but maybe I'm wrong and Chris will prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, Centenary College is located in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, we're a small college. We we range anywhere from 650 to 850 students a year uh, at the institution. Our student athlete body makes up about two thirds of the overall student body. Um, we have two main charges in the athletic department: uh, increase competitive value and increase our student athlete experience. Part of that student athlete experience is our community relationship dynamic. Center is a fantastic place. We're a small private liberal arts school. We have a ton of majors. We can even craft majors for folks. We work alongside the city and other partners in our community to help craft majors so that they go into specific industries like tennis, for example, or anything else. Um, you're going to work with a group where every single person on our campus, whether it be your coach, your professor, the, the people that make sure you have food on, in the cafeteria, those that are taking out your trash. Every person at Centenary is championing the success of our students. You will always have support. Um, and uh, you always have someone to go to. We're a diverse campus. We're very inclusive. Um, we have great programming, great people, great community support. Uh, it's challenging, though. Centenary is hard. I say this to everybody. You know, everything we do here is difficult. And the reason why, and this is for moms and dads out there, unless you want your son or daughter coming to live back at home with you when they graduate from college, all right, don't send them to Centenary, all right? Unless you're trying to move in with them, then send them to Centenary. Uh, because what we do is we help. I'm, I, I'm telling you, this place, the reason why I'm here is because I know what Centenary does for people that are students here. I'm a Centenary alumni. This place will make sure that, that our students, when they graduate, are prepared for the next level of their life. And it's not a big shock. It's not a big surprise. They are actually prepared for that next step. And that's the reason why we make it a little bit hard. I love that. I, I can't believe you left off the Paris trip. Come on now. Well, you know, that's one of those things we like to use as a surprise. So all of our freshmen, entering freshmen, get the opportunity right off the bat before they actually start what would be considered your traditional fall semester. We have an August term, which is basically 
a semester worth of one class in one month and you take half of that class in Paris, France. And that's that's not an extra add-on cost. That's actually the same tuition you pay year in and year out. Another thing I'll tell you about Division Three, you know, tennis is not a full ride scholarship sport in right. uh, for Division One or Division Two. It's part, you know, they, it, you can get one, but very few do. Mm. Um, the average uh, student athlete at Division Three actually has more financial aid through Division Three than they gain through Division One. Uh, so I I'm so be- glad you said that because yeah. I I preach that all the time and it's great to hear it from an athletic director. So thank Absolutely. you for that. So we we back in the Division One days, I did side by side. You know, student athletes at Centenary receiving about sixty percent discount when they were in the Division One era. Uh, they're receiving about more than seventy percent discount rate uh, at the Division Three era. So it's actually cheaper for the students. Don't ever let the sticker shock of a college's tuition and fees scare you. Because I don't know that we have a single student at Centenary that pays that. Hmm. You know, the average student is on 70% average, 70% discount of whatever that total price of attendance is. I love that. I love that. That's great news. Parents, you hear that? It could actually cost you less money if your child goes Division Three than Division One. So keep that in mind when you're going through this recruiting process. It's an important factor for sure. Chris, what's your what's your recruiting pitch to players or coaches that might be considering coming to Centenary? So I can't touch David's. David's very polished on that. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna come at the angle of the community, which has embraced us so warmly. Um, we are we are so close with every director at every facility here. There's opportunities. For anybody that comes into a program here, it doesn't have to be just Corby's. We've got several clubs around the around town with amazingly kind, helpful people who are trying to grow the sport just as much as we are. Um, we have been so warmly welcomed here. We uh, it, it has such a neat Southern hospitality vibe, but the people are so genuine. Um, it's just been an amazing three and a half years that's gone by super quickly, then some people say, haven't you been here longer? And there's days where it feels like we've been here longer. Uh, like the, running a tennis center is not easy. But um, my, I guess my pitch for the school is, and David has mentioned this, when people finally come and visit the school, they've got an a amazing retention rate. Um, if, they can, if they can get a visit, because this, the campus is charming, the area has a lot to offer, lots of amazing um, food. Uh, I know, was just Louisiana. thinking, I couldn't believe neither of you had mentioned Strawn's or Herbie K's yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Strawn's literally across the street from the college. Um, Best but peach so pie much... in the world, bar none. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the campus is so charming. The... Uh, you know, of course, it gets hot during the summer. We've had some crazy heat, but um, you do get you get do get other seasons other than summer. And um, so I think that when people see the school, when they see the tennis facility um, with a lot of the amenities nearby on the campus, both the, the tennis and golf campus and the school's campus, there's a lot to be proud of here. And uh, we're we've been so proud to be part of it. What else can the Parenting Aces community do to help as y'all get this tennis program back up and running? Well, from my I would say, go ahead, Chris. I, I was just going to say, from a from a financial standpoint, we need some funding to be able to accomplish what we're looking at, um, trying to add. We're praying at some point that the swimming that the swimming pool and the rec center that are on that campus that are both extremely old, decades and decades old, you know, our our prayer is that at some point when those are eliminated, that we may be able to offer additional courts heading up and toward the golf course. Um, but those are that those could still be years away. But funding would be um, would be one of the requests. Yeah. David, 
from my standpoint, from the parents, I, I would, and, and this is also for coaching candidates, look look at this school. This school is going to support you. They're going to support your child. They're going to support the student athlete, the coach. But the, the tradition here is that our teams are not made up of coaches and players. Our teams are made up of coaches, players, parents, and supporters. And that's how we treat everybody here. Um, you know, we share a brain. We, there's no dictatorship on our campus. We, everybody shares a brain for a common good. So if parents, student athlete prospects, anybody interested has ideas, we love ideas. That's, again, sharing the brain. You know, I only know what I know. That's all I know. But I hope to always be expanded on my knowledge and my ability to use that knowledge, which we term as wisdom. And so we love all comments. We love good and bad, uh, but we want to help grow uh, Centenary College Athletics, Centenary College, and the community as much as we can. And we want Querby's Tennis Center, which is already a gem right now. We don't want it to be a secret. We want it to, you know, dynamite comes in small packages, they say, but it always packs a big punch. We want that punch to be shown. We want people to see it and no longer be a secret in the South. I love that. David, if families are interested in getting more information on coming to Centenary, what's the best way for them to do that? The best way to do that is one of two ways. If you want to come visit just to check out the college, you can go to centenary.edu uh, and you can book an admissions tour, admissions visit to learn about the college. We have an amazing admissions team that can help service that. They'll give you a tour and info session. Uh, they'll even set up meetings with professors and coaches and athletic directors and the president. But you can also contact me directly. I've been here for 31 years. Um, most people call me the the old goat here uh, because I, I seem to know all the traditions and everything about the college. But you can contact me directly. Um, our athletic website is gocentenary.com. And uh, my, all my contact information is right there. Awesome. And we'll have those links in the show notes on parentingaces.com. Chris, what about Corby's? If people want more information on what you guys are up to, um, what's the best way for them sure. to get that? So we've got a couple of ways. One, we do have a Corby's Tennis Center Facebook page. We also can be, uh, you can look at our website, which is Corby's, Q-U-E-R-B as in boy, E-S, Corby's Tennis Center dot net. We went with dot net because of you know, tennis net. Tennis. <laughs> um, and then, um, and then they would be welcome. Anybody would be welcome to email me directly, Chris Dudley tennis at gmail.com. And again, we'll have those links in the show notes at parentingaces.com. Gentlemen, what a pleasure to meet you both and to kind of hash out some, some old stories before we went live on air, but, uh, I, I am so looking forward to following the success of the reinstatement of Centenary Tennis and um, the continued growth of Corby's and, and your relationship with one another. And I just appreciate you so much for taking time out to visit with us at Parenting Aces. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. And to my audience, thank you so much for tuning in. And we will catch you next time on Parenting Aces. <laughs>